All right, Jay Hell, you know Tempo Storm the best. As we get ready for game number two, what battleground do you want to see from them? It, it, I, I, at this point, I'm not 100% sure. They've, they've tried so much during the opening stage that you, it, it really makes it hard to analyze this team now. It, everything that we saw during league play for nine plus months going yeah. into playoffs, almost 10 months, it seemed like everything was figured out. They excel at second pick. Uh, they love Dragonshire. They go to this map. It's their favorite battleground. They do so many things while well, countering drafts, playing into that second pick role. They said, we're comfortable going to wherever other teams want, and they play that. So after the group stage, it seems like a lot of that has just kind of been wiped off the, the, the board, and they're like, let's start over. And it's really hard to break down where the strengths lie because it's been everything. And that game in particular, the heroics, it just felt like they tried to do one thing while also doing the other, and it almost feels like you just need to go down that one path. And I, I agree with Kaldor in the way that they maybe, that we anticipated them playing it because we've seen success from sure. that with other teams, we didn't see that. So there's no way to say, hey, we know what they were trying to do until we can actually talk to them and figure that out. Kaldor, last thought before we go to the battleground. It just feels they, they need to stop playing this disrespectful. You can't play into Dignitas like this. It might work against the lesser team, not against Dig. Like again, I repeat myself, group stage, you try the double support, it worked in the region, it's a little bit iffy, and then you measure it up against in the international teams. And then at some point you decide, okay, it might work in that context on this map, but you have to adapt a little bit. And the strategy that I still like the most is when they played macro on Cursed Hollow. That was a good attempt. It's an attempt that is execution heavy because it can never be forced into a fight. And it's tough against a strong opponent like Genji or Dignitas. But there's at least a concept behind it that I can look at and I can say, okay, this makes sense. You executed it well. If you do that a little bit better, I can see you win the map. But I look at the last composition and it's just, as we said, all over the place. And there is no real idea behind it that you can see and that is executed in the gameplay. Well, let's see if Tempo Storm is going to go back to their roots here. As Battleground number two is ready to be pulled out. Where are we going? It looks like we will be heading to Towers of Doom. Tempo Storm will be having first pick. Dignitas will be having the Battleground choice. Yeah, Dignitas is going to be happy with this map pick right here. This once again allows them to play that aggressive style, but also allows them to play the macro, which for the most part they weren't really too punished on. So they're going to have some pocket picks of their own that they can try and run. They've used the Abyssal solo support before, trying to dive into the idea of, hey, Tem uh, Tempo Storm, if you get crazy, we can do crazy things as well. So I'm expecting once again to sort of see the idea of a Medivh ban, very standard bans between these two teams, potentially the Abyssal ban, but, you know, I, I can't see a world in which Tempo Storm right now, when they know that they could potentially get eliminated from BlizzCon, go, all right, we're going to play traditional, I say in quote marks, standard. Like, I feel like we're going to still, still see a lot of experimentation, but maybe tone down at least one dial. I would expect a more normal game from them. It's a map that they played a lot in League Play as well. Dignitas didn't play it as much. The thing is, you want to put off something crazy, for example, that Murky with an Abathur. If your four-man still loses to your opponent's four-man, then all they have to do is send one hero to babysit the Murky, and that's it. And I feel like that was a bit of a problem that they had. You need to at least, if you want to go for these strategies, have a strong four-man or three-man that can trade into your opponent. That wasn't the case. But I expect a much more normal game from here then. That might for them mean again double support, but less experimental than what you've just seen. Well, going against Dignitas, it was something I mentioned in the previous series as we get a Toronto ban. Some excited fans about the, the normal pick there. But when you go against Dignitas, EU, they prioritize and utilize their solo laner. It's different than the way Korea does it, but you could argue that EU does it better, and they have Wubby, the single best undisputed solo laner in the game. And so for them, the way that they play around that, we already see the prioritization by banning Dahaka, which means that Wubby, their drafter, has an idea of what this team is going to do. And you can never question that. And there's a Zeratul pick, and we saw Snitch on that Zeratul previously so strong. They also ran it with the Abather comp themselves. It might just be baiting out a ban in the second ban. The beauty of the Zeratul pick, too, is it's also interchangeable. You can put it in the top lane, you can also put it on Snitch there, depending on what this team needs exactly for it after they see what Temple Storm pulls out. And I mean, you look at this, and the first thing that you, the first thought you have is Emily Jaina. You need to take care of her now. You can run into a Void Prison um, Apocalypse combo, so you need to either ban her out or pick her for yourself. So Temple Storm should definitely uh, ban her here, or there is a huge Wombo combo potential for Dignitas. But you know, we talked a bit about Wubi, and Wubi is still following a pattern that we've seen in Europe from him. Whenever he gets a chance to pick his URL, he jumps on URL, and that we saw that in the last game. The impact that he has with that hero is crazy, and teams have not really shown a lot of respect to that here. Well, the other thing is, is that even if Snitch does go down a different route, Wubi is a very good Zeratul yeah. player. So they have multiple things that they can do as the priority on that solo laner continues, targeting Glaurung. So no Dahaka, no Malthale, two heroes that we've known Dahaka to play quite a 
bit. The Abathur ban comes out. Now let's see if we get that Jaina to pair with the Zeratul and Diablo, which we saw just a week ago. And that's such a scary composition. If you see that right there, you, you're absolutely terrified. And I mean, the Zeratul does also fulfill the role that you would have with that Genji. You got that roam, you got the ability to always scatter information, which is what you're looking to try and achieve with this Medivh. Um, there's a possible world here where Tempo Storm don't run a traditional uh, support as such and go to Tyrande and Tassadar. I don't want to say it's going to happen, but there's a part of me that goes, look, you need some kind of response to the Zeratul, otherwise he's just going to run rings around you. All right, so we don't have the Jaina right away. The Jaina setup, by the way, is also a Dignitas Ren on this particular map. Yep. Back then it was an Abathar solo support, so the Abathar ban on the side of Tempo Storm at least eliminates that. The problem is if you have the Zeratul on the other side, then Abathar, of course, emphasizes the danger that he brings to any lane even more so. And if you then have a strong top laner, you can easily turn that into a one versus three if he rotates over. But there's still the opportunity for the burst damage and the adjustment towards the end. Wow. Oh my. Well, there's some lost Vikings again. We know that they're very strong on Towers of Doom, or they used to be. Let's see if we get the Viking Hunter, because Jaina does pair well with Malfurion because of the Innervate. It doesn't even matter who this last pick is, because the way that Zeratul roams around, the best way to deal with Vikings is to have a yeah. Viking Hunter. Zeratul is one of the absolute best Viking Hunters you have. He's so good because as a Viking player, you stare at the minimap the entire time. And if he's able to get that jump on you, he's going to pick you off and you're not getting those region globes and of course that soak. Now with that being said, I like this draft from Tempo Storm. First off, we know that Vikings are great on Towers of Doom, but you have kill potential available for you. You have a strong four-man. This is doable by them, but then again, it's taking toss. Also, that Vikings into the Zeratul kind of reminds me a little bit of BlizzCon last year. Roll 20. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so that, was, that didn't really work well back then. But I agree with you that that draft is at least a lot better. You have a strong foreman that can really get the kills. You can lead with an Arthas. They're carrying a combo with Arthas exi exist for ages, 2015 already. Mm. Got nerfed since then uh, with how much synergy they have, but it's still a great setup. So you can definitely get your kills here with the Toronto on top of that too. The Vikings are fantastic to also get the altars, put the pressure onto the lanes. So from that aspect, I like it a lot more. But then again, you look towards Dignitas and there's a good combo potential and you also have that Zara tool that can hunt down the Vikings. And I mean here. my only final concern though Caldor though is you got the Sergeant Hammer coming in as that final fifth pick and that yep. is that surprise fact right yep. you're thinking look how do I actually get uh, threatened here if I'm Sergeant Hammer you know you're trying to bait out this ability coming out from Arthas or from Kerrigan there's no real gap closer usually we send them a deep to try and get these immobile tanks into that range so you're looking at a situation right now where you're thinking okay Sergeant Hammer can sit back fine she can poke from afar she can do what she needs to do and Zero can go around the map so look we're now winning that four man and now we're also taking taking out your XP that you're trying to soak. And once again, it just feels like Tempo Storm are like, Ugh. we've been drafted into a bit of a, a narrow corridor. I mean, you do not even have to send the players top lane. You can literally just like double soak with the Zero tool. You can have yeah. the players together yeah. with a hammer. And then how do you wreck into that format? You get the bunk out whenever the engage comes. You have hammer also with a space creation there. So just pushing your opponent back. So you can play it around that. And Zero tool gets the double soak plus the Vikings. It feels like the Kerrigan has to be on point here. She's yes. going to be stressed out because of that Sergeant Hammer. Let's go ahead and go into game number two and see if Tempo Storm gets in this to a game number three. Tempo Storm will be the last hope here for North America. Skimmy, quite a unique draft in game number one. More to the standard, but with the X factor, not the XYZ factor that we saw in the last game. Yeah, that was a pretty crazy alphabet game, I'll tell you that much. We saw some wild picks and some wild drafts, but also some wild strategies. Not too sure what we're going to see coming out of this one, if it's going to be enough shabam when you have your life on the line here in a North American crowd here at BlizzCon. Fan looking to look... I suppose jump into that experience from 2015 and say, now is that time for it to empower me. Just picking up a win against the likes of Dignitas would be so big for them. We'll see as they get ready in just a moment. On left-hand side from Europe, it's JPL on Diablo. Whoopi on Blaze, Poik here on Sergeant Hammer, Snitch on Zeratul, and finally, Zalia on Mount Fury. And this is your team here, it's Dignitas. All hands on deck here for Tempo Storm as it's going to be June on Taronda. Vin will be on Rainer, giving him the pepper. Caterpillar on the front line. The Arthas has been very known lately. Fan will be on the Kerrigan, and Glaurung will be on the Lost Vikings. Give it up for Tempo Storm. Really curious to see how Tempo Storm played this early game. It'll be a big tell of their confidence there stress levels right now. Well, the 
strategy for Dignitas in the draft really played out. They took a away a lot of the diving, and as you mentioned, Skimmy, it's like, how do you get onto that back line? Poik with a nice knockback, the Kerrigan combo, the leap back in. There's going to be the stun, the roots, the heels, not enough. That's first blood for Tempo Storm. Beautiful pick up there from Tempo Storm. This is what we need to see from them. It looks so good from Poik there with the concussive blast to get out of harm's way, but the fan jump comes across. He ravages him. And that's what we want to see, bouncing between these lanes, really looking to exude some kind of, hey, we're here to play, we're not afraid of you. For Dignitas, that one minute mark has passed. With the Vikings, you're, you're able to hold one member in that top lane, so it's no longer that priority of getting that solo laner down. You can already see Wubby making his way down to that mid lane. He wants to be in quick rotation in case of Tempo Storm coming in for that flank. And Cattle, they're very familiar with that style themselves. Cata will thwart off the blaze, but they will concede the Sapper camp for now as Dignitas and Tempo Storm both pick those up early. So what we're seeing so far is a three lane split with these Vikings. This allows Tempo Storm to respond with this four man by just going to any lane and never feeling threatened. This does obviously require Glaurung to be very disciplined with his ability to micromanage all of these. But you're going to see it's this four man rotation they come across. If CC lands, things will go across. But if it doesn't land, there is pressure on the other side as Dignitas can turn this fight around and they can look to get some kills of their own. Well, Cattle is in deep. He's trying to survive, but that's going to be first kill here for Dignitas as they even up the scoreboard. Take a small lead momentarily. Burden of execution really in the court here for Tempo Storm. Very predictable what their composition is looking to try and do. It's either opening up there with a the Howling Blast or you want to go in with that Kerrigan combination. If that lands, then somebody will die. They can't get in range. They cannot land at the threat. The punishment potential that Dignitas can come across with as a result is very strong. And so far, the pressure that we're looking oh. to see from the Zeratul Zeratul just passed by there. <laughs> Fan. He knows he can't use that combo because there is a blink available. For Tempo Storm, they have multiple forms of CC, or at least range CC, when it comes to the root from Arthas, but also the stun from Taranda. If you can force out one of those self-unstoppables by Sergeant Hammer, then you can look to follow up and dive and maybe get that. It just requires a lot of luck, a very good positioning, and some execution. Nature's Cure is a post CC ability, Snitch starting to path through, Cattle not able to get the root there. I do have one Viking in the bottom lane. It is going to be Eric looking to try and be nimble and aggressive, but he does get taken out, so no defense when it comes to that one. Looks to be so far, but Dignitas will pick up one here. As long as Tempo Storm can pick up two, they still are in a very healthy spot. Cattle dropping low, does have the heals and does have to disengage as Tempo Storm still chasing them through. Well, Sergeant Hammer still showing at the bottom. Tempo Storm, they're actually going to concede this top left, not willing to take that fight. They don't want to give up too much in the macro game because the Vikings, as good as they are at soaking, they're not good at defending when people are sieging up on structures. You can see that bottom wall already down due to the work of Poik on that Sergeant Hammer. So Tempo Storm, they're willing to slow things down, wait for the long game, find moments, find opportunities as we see another route come in there from Cattle but the lead starting to mount for Dignitas here in the early game. Dignitas hitting level seven right now. 12 stacks here on the level one talent for Blaze. We have New Habits looking to give him that unstoppable, which would be so damn important, especially for being able to utilize that jet propulsion to give yourself some peeling potential to really try and protect Poik here on that Sergeant Hammer, but also ensuring that that bunker, when it does come down, when it is needed, is available. Just everything that Wubby does, playing around the vision, playing around there, it's hard to get on to a target like that. We're going to see Snitch continue to harass, disrupt the rotations, because for Dignitas, it's a matter of, that's nice, we still have this double lane soak from our Blaze, and now we're going to clear that bot lane, and we're going to push forward. They have these sappers here continuing to make plays, and it's very easy to make this when you have that double lane soak potential. They move forward, and that four takes damage. What's interesting is we haven't seen Snitch here go for a big focus on trying to take down these Vikings. It's all about looking to get vision, looking to try and snipe out where Tempo Storm are going for, predicting the next move, being proactive as opposed to being reactive and saying, yes, you do have the Vikings, but we're prepared to let you get a grace in another lane as long as we can beat you in your four-man. Well, this gang squad for Tempo Storm, it's threatening, but the mobility from Snitch, he's made all the right plays, keeping them dancing, keeping them guessing. We'll continue to dodge another, just staying mounted. Tempo Storm, they're struggling to find that Snitch comes in now that he has wormhole he's like good luck boys your cc is not fast enough as he'll come in get the wormhole in get the cleave and drop right back out 
Two ults available this time. Poik is still in the bottom lane with the hover mode, looking to try and keep some pressure. And as you mentioned, really pressure. One of the weaknesses of the Vikings here, which is those turrets are gone. Can we get a bell tower? Can we get some extra shots when it comes to this next altar phase? But both have gone and is still tied at four for four. Although Dignitas are in a slight lead. Wubby's trying to track down Glaurung. We'll get the slow, just allowing Snitch to get in here. They're trying to get the kill, but the tower still remains, as do the minions, not willing to commit those resources there. But now, after you've got those rotations out, now you're looking to threaten those Vikings one by one. As the game goes on, those death timers get longer, and so look for Snitch to start looking for those picks onto each one of those in rotations. If they can make it happen, another blink out. Snitch wormholes back in, trying to make the play. They're getting the track down. Fan taking damage. Pyromania used, and Wubby be forced to retreat. Be forced to retreat right there. That would have been a very good fight for Tempo Storm. If they could have got that kill just before level 10, denying Dignitas that lead that they have acquired. But these XP differences are bang on with only one killer piece. And Poik staying pretty in this bottom lane. He is not allowing any grace. Saying, sure, you can have some push in the top lane, but at least two of these lanes have to be pressured by us. Poik getting the heck out of dodge there. There was the stun and he use those thrusters to get out of there and rightfully so but the damage starting to mount in that bottom lane once they get that it is easier for tempo storm because they can keep the vikings in the other lanes use the big four man to try and get down there you have rainer there but it does give you that potential to regain structures but you don't want to lose them in the first place it's inevitable at this point wubby almost getting caught out jet propulsion fan making the plays getting the jump bunker used they're trying to get the track down there's going to be the jump again but the slow is enough and fan not able to make up ground and that is what makes wubby so great calm under pressure so so calm right there the jet propulsion to dodge out the howling blast and instantly the response there with the bunker cool as you can be not a care in the world. And if we take a quick look at some of the ultimates uh, that have been chosen here at level 10, we do have the Napalm Strikes. Not going to go for the BFG, the instant blow up potential for that counter engage. They want extra sustain, as well as that Tranquility Twilight Dream. I'm not really phased about that one. They want to make sure that they have armor, health, and the ability to turn things around. Well, this is what you want to see. If you can take control of this top lane for Tempo Storm, the Vikings can hold these lanes much easier, and you can get damage done in the other lanes. Tempo Storm with a strategy. It's going to be difficult to pull off against the likes of Dignitas, but they do get that top fort down. We'll give them some control. Now the gank squad starting to rotate down. Dignitas got some early damage in in that mid lane as that climb, but they also gain control of the bottom bell tower in the bottom right. As you say, it is a trade there, one for one. Dignitas still in the lead with shot count by eight. And Poik still showing no signs of release. He's been in his bot lane for the entire time, really keeping Glaurung in check, saying you have to micromanage these Vikings as well as you can. And well, we're going to find some aggression here, but not going to be concerned by the combo, as it is just Fan on his own. Wubby juking left and right. Snitch. Lurking around, trying to look for a play of his own. Tempo Storm has started to take a minor lead in terms of XP. It's just a matter of the long play for them as he'll come forward, get the auto attack proc there. Snitch continuing to harass this team. And remember, Zeratul gets higher and higher at 16. He gets that burst damage. That backline is not exactly the strongest. They are very susceptible to some counter dive for Snitch to make those big plays. Two more orders spawning here in 25 seconds as both teams are still stuck in a stalemate of four uh -oh. for trading out. Tempo Storm looking to get aggressive here in the bottom lane. Trying to do a bit of a wrap around. They've caught out Poik. He might be in a situation. Frost has had to be burnt on very quickly, but he retreats to the bell tower. The Howling Blast does not connect, but Snitch may have found some aggression to sell. Well, he's trying to get on there. There's going to be the dive over the VP. It's isolated. Fan, he's not able to survive. Another play made there. There's going to be the APOC follow up. Icebound Fortitude will buy cattle some time, but they get the counter kill onto Snitch on that Zeratul. Perfect execution on that first play. But Dignitas still getting this first channel and with that bottom one, then that bottom concave, it's going to make it hard for Tempo Storm to contest that. A one for one trade, but still two very impactful ultimates across the board from both of these teams. The bunker, the tranquility, defense is the name of the game here for Dignitas to try and respond to what is going to come across here from the side of Tempo Storm. But despite this, Tempo Storm will find themselves in a situation where they do have the XP lead. But their core is down at least double and Vikings gone. top have the bribe, and that's going to help them control that bottom or that top lane. That buys a significant amount of time. Wubby can defend that, but it almost handcuffs him there unless Dignitas is willing to give some of that up. So now, Tempo Storm, they'll look to get the invade. They know that they have that top lane occupied, and now they're going to look to reclaim this bottom lane or get some control for now. 
So Temple Storm, they do find themselves down 32 to 16, but their, their long-term strategy, is it too long-term for them to come back in this game? And it's interesting because, you know, reading Snitch's interview when he was discussing with uh, Genji's Rich about Tempo Storm, he was saying they were quite upset about the fact that Tempo Storm recently have been known for just trying to avoid team fights. They just want to macro, they just want to try and keep lane pressure. They want to try and do anything but team fights, despite having a composition which looks on paper designed to get kills. No, they are more focused on macro, more focused on the ability to try and micro manage this map. Well, they'll take another bell tower, but they have to get down to this bottom lane to defend. Dignitas will push forward with these sappers. And the recl reclamation of that top lane by Wubby. Continuing to thwart Tempo Storm, who will give up the Sappers in exchange for those four shots from the... Actually, they're not even going to boss here. No boss. They want level 16. They spot Wubby in the mid lane. Are we going to see a dive here from Fano? They're going to switch on towards Snitch. But then the bait right there on towards Snitch. Oh, man! Maybe the block there with Zeratul falling on down. The bunker comes across. But Wabi a little bit too late. And that was a beautiful little bit of finesse where they jump and go one way, flick it to the other way, and Snitch caught off guard. Fan made that play on Infernal Shrines during the playoffs. A similar play, you dive one way, you go the other. The Unstoppable used by Poik. Wubby comes in. Remember, Bunker was used in that last fight. Catalan team looking for a fight. They get the lockdown onto Wubby. Pyromania used. Wubby starting to track out. JPL zoning for now. Glaurung gets interrupted by Zelia with that Moonfire. Glaurung trying to make plays on the backside. Skimmy. DP and a is still available for Dignitas, whereas on the other hand, you're looking at some ultimates that aren't available. That's what Tempo Storm need. They have basic ability. 